going. Okay, recording has started. All right, thanks everyone and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, I've got notes here. I didn't even look at the notes yet, so let's uh, let's take a look at those and I'll share my screen so we can talk through them together. Okay, so you should see on my screen um, a reasonably sized version of the office hours for today, the 20th of July. All right, so it looks like we've got a question about a particular issue. And we can certainly look at that together. And uh, other periodic meeting events. So Jonathan, you want to give us some insight on, we can look at 2987 pretty easily. Uh, what's any further details you want to offer on periodic meeting events? Yes, of course. Uh, can you visit it, please? Uh, I guess I, I put the link on the number, on the hyperlink on the number. Oh, there okay. I don't see a hyperlink there, nope. but it's it's easy to do. I, I guess it's here. Here, I put there. Oh. Okay. Oops, it's on the document, if you wish. Thank you. Because it's just, yeah, there we go. And uh, Oleg has complained that it's a, a blank page. Maybe in the past someone has plans for it, but uh, forgot it, I guess. Uh, how, how do I need to do it this page or, or just remove it? What do you guess? I think that for me, I think that configuring the system is a, a reasonable topic. It's a very reasonable topic for managing Jenkins. It may in this case be too broad and given the, the duration that it's existed without any content, uh, if the day comes that we get someone who proposes, hey, I'd like to put content there, great, we bring it back. So my guess for now would be we just delete it. Okay. There is no uh, reference on the week about the configuration system. Oh, there's there's lots of information on the wiki about configuring the system, but much of it is expressed in managing users, managing nodes, script mm. console, groovy hook scripts, managing tools. Every one of those things is effectively configuring the system. And so okay. with, with that many topics already saying how you configure subsets of the system, a top level, a top level thing that says configuring the system, I'm not sure what it would say. Uh, <laughs> actually, the writer's standpoint, and I'm not super familiar with this, but it might be that it should be a short introduction. There's all those specific things, but, and the thing I see coming in is you can edit the config.xml file and we have configuration as code now. And there may be some other options, just sort of a high level. The specifics may be covered, but. Mm. Oh, that could be. Yeah, so good. I good can't tell you how long I was writing about Jenkins before I figured out about the config.xml, and I still don't know all about it. Um, well, and, right now and, there's a very, to say that there are these two options and that there's some things you can do in one that you can't do in the other. And, and then to say that the specifics about configuring each individual component are going to be embedded in the doc for that component. It yeah, may okay. be that it's a, yeah, Jonathan, I think it's a good call. Sorry, Mark <laughs> writers. <laughs> no, no, that, I think you make a good point. This could just be an introduction. I'm not sure I agree. I'm entirely aligned with your, your separation of which things it should introduce. I think it would introduce the concept that Jenkins is a, a profoundly configurable system, right? It, it can be mm -hmm. configured to do 
all manner of things and in in many different ways and it can be configured and so this might this page might introduce the concepts that are involved in the configuration of Jen, Jenkins where those concepts are can be UI driven right, right. can be oh, code driven code. yes and if it's code driven it can be code driven through the configuration is code plugin or through the job DSL plugin. Right. And the CLI REST API and right. So, I mean, so you know, it's like if I'm a new user and I want to know how do I configure this system, I don't see a hit. There's specifics, right? But there's nothing about configuring it. I, I, I like that. That's a very good point. So, so this might be an excellent place to put and several a few say three or four maybe but not more than that introductory paragraphs that introduce the various configuration concepts and mm -hmm. then then jump to details of those concepts so what's a tool ah that's an important concept yes what's a plugin that's an important concept might jump to the plugins how do you configure security or what's what is security what are you securing in the context of jenkins so i think i think there's some what's an agent or a node and so so yeah i guess i guess this could be an intro or back to the history of it still is there's not all there's never been any content placed here if we said we will put an intro someday and when we do we'll bring this page back that that is fine as well to me. But this is it's the first section under Manning G. Jenkins, right? Right, exactly. So an overview. Well, the fact that to understand that most things that you can do on the UI, you can also do from CLI and REST API. Um, all the the idea that most configuration changes you make are going to necessitate a restart of Jenkins. Okay, so maybe you are proposing we work on a a first introduction about each option of the configuration menu. For example, credentials, items, it will help you to create credentials, administrative, and for more information, visit the on page. Something like that. I mean, we're looking at something stuff. that's more high level, just at a high level, what does it mean to configure Jenkins? That you do a lot from the UI, you do some from CLI, we've now got configuration as code. Um, yeah, that it is, as Mark said, that it is highly configurable, that there's very little in it that you cannot control. Um, almost sort of that high level, there's managing the system and configuring Jenkins is a small, is a subset of managing. Um, okay. Uh, can uh, Meg or Mark offer some talk talks about uh, the, the specification to work on it to direct my work, for example? I think so. Let me. I'm going to try to just type yeah. it in here. Let's uh, make yeah, this... not for now. Maybe later. I... Yeah. So is. I, I'm just thinking that Actually, if we do it now, so that is, since Oleg is looking at this, I'd like to see what Oleg thinks of what we're saying. It's a good time for a for an issue conversation, right? Right. Yeah. Or we could call a meeting and invite Oleg, which seems like a waste of time, but just see if what we're thinking makes sense to him. And let me add also, in case the board will decide to uh, do some content in this page maybe we can add some section about best practice. For example, in yes. case if we started configuring uh, <laughs> uh, using uh, configuration as code plugin, does it make sense to switch to UI? And right. vice versa. One or the other, yes. Yeah, if we started from UI, how uh, advisable it is to uh, switch to configure as code plugin. Something. There is, I've got to grab this for something else. There is, they just came out with a new plugin that if you install and enable that, that once you do something in CASC, it makes everything else read only. So you can't go into the UI and change stuff. And we recognize, recommend that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
there is another issue that uh, that could be referenced to us. Let me find it. Just a moment. Oh, Mark, the fact that whatever you see on any of these configuration screens may change depending on what plugins you install. That most plugins start adding stuff to your config screens. And that was, to me, that was shocking when I first, I came from operation systems, you know, and you kind of had your operation system configuration that didn't change a lot. And then you got into all the other stuff that you could configure, but. Um, right, good, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Frequently created and extended by plugins and uh, configuration as code uh, is one or configuration techniques might include configuration as, or configuration from the UI. Yeah, let's do in that order here. Um, CLI and APIs. I, yeah, good, yes, Con or configuration from Groovy scripts. Okay, yep system level groovy scripts and i'm not sure which order they should be in so that's right we can talk to configuration from from um, rest api calls you make cli separate uh yes uh jenkins command line interface Put CLI into that line because they never use the spelled out. More's the pity. Okay, configuration as code plugin. Job DSL plugin. Okay, uh, yeah. so Mark, I I sent another link uh, on chat, Zoom chat. Okay. It's about the page that uh, I I sent APR this week. Maybe give to us some idea, reference idea about it. if you can access, please. Okay. Yeah. Just a moment. Let me. Yeah. Fix my mistake here. <laughs> um. Having to remember which form of indentation uh, is being used. <laughs> which markup language am I writing in today? Um. Another thing, just to mention in passing, the authorizations required that like not everybody who wanders by is going to be or should be allowed to change the configuration. But some people might be able to change some part of it and not all of it or I don't know. We don't want to get into real information just to alert them to that there are authorization issues. Right, authorization authentication links there. Maybe actually put out authorization pointing to the permissions that are granted on the matrix. Sort of, you know. that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jonathan, do you does that is this give you enough stuff that you could start on writing something? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> right. It's what, of there. <laughs> I always Mark. Shut up. You don't know this about life as a writer. And I'm guess writing, I I would write about the entire Jenkins in this page. Right. Well, that's <laughs> there are there are writing tasks that are mostly research and learning, and then a little bit of writing. And there's other things that's really just writing that you sit back and you've got all these details. And there's like there's no if somebody who's starting there's no way I can't see the forest. All the trees are here. Tell me about the forest. And it's really just a writing exercise. And okay. a, a writer spots it as you did. So let's see. And, and you okay. said, Jonathan, you and, said and you posted it in the, the chat. chat. Okay. So let me bring up the chat. Now, how do I find the chat in my other? Oh, it is chat. Okay. So distributed builds. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I, I sent a PR. Uh, about this migration, but I, I guess the idea may be similar to this page. Uh, it's the first uh, kind of, uh, I, I get on the documentation. It just uh, tell uh, some history about the introduction, some points, and get to, to read there uh, some links to visit the specific pages. 
maybe it's that idea to create the the configuration system page. It's the same. That's yes. I think I think this page configuring the yeah. system should be. I like I like Meg's suggestion that it should be brief, so a relatively few paragraphs, and then stop. And mm -hmm. and inside those paragraphs, it's perfectly fine to. So the paragraph should introduce a few key concepts, but not not too many, you know, one or okay. two concepts per paragraph and have hyperlinks inside the paragraphs to the things that are related to them. So right, it's right there, CLI, script consoles, Groovy scripts. No, okay. in process. I yeah. Guess. Okay. But now I yeah. I don't know how good or bad. Oh, okay. So there is content behind script console and CLI. Good. Okay. So, so there is, there is, and, and certainly that intro page managing plugins, it seems reasonable that it would have a paragraph that talks about what's a plugin and how, or maybe that's already there in using Jenkins. It would be really astonishing if it were not, but I'm not sure it is that that's so, so certainly configuring the system would have be a great excuse to introduce a plugin is this and you install plugins to add capability and here's a link to the managing plugins page right no okay yeah and also my advice would be uh, of course we can make things very complex as it is already with configuration of jenkins but uh we we want to keep in mind a new user of Jenkins, so attract new customers, basically. And uh, uh, my advice would be to keep them in mind while suggesting options for configuration. So they will not be lost in the forest, as I can say. Great. But that it is, there's a lot of this, I, I see the history here that so much of this was written by a small cadre of insiders to begin with. <laughs> and they forget the very that if I'm new to this, I don't know some of the basics. I look at the UI, I sit there and I configure, and it's like, yeah, yeah, but I've got a hundred masters. I have to do this a hundred times. I wish I could just write a shell script. Why don't they give me a shell script? Well, we did. We just didn't tell you about it. If you if you dig enough, you'll find the docs that are good about how to do that. So yeah, okay. If we're gonna you might one of my bugaboos, and I can see exactly the history that once upon a time there was a Jenkins and you put all your stuff there and you ran your builds on it and there was a day when the distributed builds was probably the hot new feature and that still shows and today it is not a hot new feature it's how i think our installation you get jenkins up and running now you create a node you put an agent on it and some executors and here's how you do this and in the fine print you say if you're just doing, if you're just playing around and learning, it is okay to put that node on your Jenkins master, but never in production. But as it is, if I read through the documentation very cautiously, I go to a lot of work and I'm running my pipelines and my jobs up on my masters. And then somewhere along the line, it says, oh, if you really want to be fancy, you don't have to do it that way. Whereas we, you know, but the subtleties of the table of contents, that stuff, that still last it looks to me like an add-on feature but someday in my spare time maybe i'll go back and rehack it all but and no doubt annoy everybody in the community who's just perfectly happy with it the way it is but okay so jonathan did we did we cover cover your, yeah. your question there yeah, it's covered. Uh, just uh, one more question, but this time about the distribution, distribute build page. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I sent the migration, TR, okay, but in the content, there is some links that point to another page from week, two week, uh, week page. Yeah, because that page uh, don't was migrated yet. There is some problem with these links or, or no? We can keep them, what do you say about We, we can keep links to the wiki if the, yeah. if, the, 
if there isn't a better page already on Jenkins.io, uh, yeah, and that if that wiki page has not already been redirected to another location on Jenkins, it's not been migrated. It is perfectly yeah. reasonable for Jenkins.io to have links to the wiki. Um, otherwise, we we risk that an attempt to migrate one single page will if we're not careful, migrate the entire wiki before the pull request is done. No, oh, so skip those there. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so, so I think we've covered issue 2987. Um, other periodic meeting events. Tell me more about that question. Uh, that question is about, uh, uh, for example, uh, we are in the docs of hours, right? This mm -hmm. meeting, yeah. For example, it's only the proposal to work on the Google season of docs or this kind of meeting exists before the Google season of docs. Uh, oh. I don't know the history. It, it only came into being because we felt yeah. the need for it in Google Season of Docs. It will continue to exist as long as people attend and there are interesting topics to discuss. We won't, we won't cancel this meeting until we find that it's just not meeting our needs. No, okay, because I, I, I'm afraid to, maybe because we passed the, after the Google pronunciations about the technical writer, uh, there is no more meetings to to ask questions or what the idea no no I, quite the opposite the the intention of office hours is really to allow us to help each other and we'll keep doing that as long as there are people who ask for help and people who can offer help now okay so Look, i just got hired to a new job today and i'm meeting jenkins for the first time and i'm a writer and I start reading the docs and say, gee, I'd like to fix some of this. Do I quickly find out that there are doc office hours every week that I could attend? Uh, probably not. What we hope you'll find out very quickly is that there is a link here, improve this page. You'll mm -hmm. click it and it will take you right into offering your improvement. But I must say, I'd like to know what's going, I mean, I, I, this happened to me when I first started actually, Mark, and you were a colleague and I still didn't know, you know, I had no place just to look in general, what, you know, to know who's doing what with this and what's the system and. Well, um, and so overview kind of things, you can certainly look at the doc SIG, the documentation special interest group, uh -huh. and it gives you a guidance to, hey, here are the meetings. Um, it's, it talks about the the special interest group it does not however mention office hours so it's a good point that we may want to put an action item on me to put an entry oh no it does mention it sorry it does mm. ah. okay each monday at 2200 utc so yes it does and there is also under community uh item there is events link uh i think and under events, it's event calendar. Uh, there is docs hours also mentioned there. Mm, okay. I'm, I haven't tried searching this, maybe. I'm not sure if it is possible to search so, somehow in calendar. But. Yeah, so, so there, are, there are at least two locations where it's described. Um, I, I'm, I'm not yet persuaded that we could ever put it in enough locations that a new contributor would immediately find it. But that's, that's not a big deal. The reality is they will find it one way or the other, either by a question to the Gitter chat or a question to the docs mailing list or by somebody just telling them, hey, here's this office hours you could attend. Yeah. Did that address your question, Meg? Sure, yeah, just a random one. If okay. if I if I go in and say I'd like to improve the stock, is my name associate my name would be associated with that, right? 
It, it will be. Yeah. So when you submit, do we the, have any sort of thing that says, "Hey, thanks. This was a great addition." Did you know that we have um, a weekly office hours for documentation work, and you're welcome to join any time or something? We we do not. That's an interesting. There is, is that a, too invasive, intrusive. I don't know. It's actually not the the GitHub. That's a it's an interesting idea. Uh, ways to incent uh, writers to continue contributing. Right. Right. And uh, there are there are, I believe it's GitHub uh, offers some automatic replies, etc. That that are not currently enabled. Um, uh -huh. Another, of course, is and this one has been astonishingly effective. Um, do a hack um, hack event. Our next will be Hacktoberfest, mm -hmm. and since send, send um, okay, I'm going to use the word swag, and I'm not sure that the word swag is a is a reasonably well understood. <laughs> send marketing materials. What what's a what's a good reasonable word for swag, Meg? Um, I don't know. It's kind of toys, but uh, yeah. So I don't know for people who are non for whom English is just. I'm also constantly amazed at the English words that non-native English speakers are familiar with. Yeah, so Jonathan, help us here, or Vlad, yeah. either of you. Do you know what we mean by does, swag? Does the word swag say anything for you? Yeah, it's small gifts. It's okay, yes, gifts. yes, you said it brilliantly, small gifts. Thank you, that's perfect. That's much better than swag. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw swag and the mail from Jenkins, I didn't understand you. <laughs> Right. I mean, exactly. It, it is very, that's even worse than being not really, not terribly English. It's very much marketing speak, right? It's right. not even, it's not even technical English. It's, it's some, no. some bizarre word from somewhere. <laughs> okay. So, so that's our, this has been our most effective incentive. Uh, the, the encouraging people to, Hey, tweet your tweet, the package you received from uh, the Hackfest. And that has that has generated lots of positive positive noise. Right. But how do people does everybody who knows that there's a Hackfest coming up know, I mean, would be interested. Like that would be a thing for GitHub to send everybody that's contributed anything to say the docs in the last year might get. I'm getting too much Netflix mail right now, but it's starting to, you know, finished watching like a six season thing i finally finished it and the next day it's like we hope you enjoyed it would you like to watch it again and you might like to watch these other things but i'm like you know okay on the one hand you're annoying me sometimes because but you know that's not a bad idea it's like netflix cares about me yeah and i that's a good question i'll i'll have to do further investigation i don't i don't know uh I don't know of any obvious uh, any any techniques. I'm I think GitHub actually does have a way to to encourage further engagement, but I I haven't studied it enough to see what we could do with it. Yeah, it's just because yeah. I've I've Maybe. heard it around other open source communities. This is one of the nicest ones, but from the other ones, when I come into this one, I'm not real anxious to jump in there and let somebody start throwing things at me. You know. And it, it would if you, you know, if I did something little, something that they got my name to write back and say, hey, you know, we're glad to see you here. Um, would you like to do more? <laughs> Jonathan, did you have something more to say there? You may have yeah, more yeah, experience. It's, it's a good idea uh, uh, about the stuff they made, uh, talking about. For example, in our Jinx IO page, we have a link there to uh, world communities that work with Jenkins. But uh, for example, in the last Hacktober Hackfest, I participated the first one. Uh, no of my friends know it about. Maybe send a mail for that community links or some uh, pronunciations about the next event. We we increase our number of participation. We already have the links to their the groups or their meetups. Mm -hmm. 
um, something else, Mark, you and I should look at this sometime when you have a few minutes because we can fix it fast. Um, in our Jenkins Fundamentals class that we offer, it's pared down. It's now just about an hour class. We took away to, and but we do have one section there about contributing to Jenkins. It's pretty short, but we might want to add just a slide or two. You know, we just, we sort of point them to stuff, but say if you're interested in this, you know, there are office hours and, you know, for different groups and all this sort of stuff, you know, there might be just a slide there that that would open up. We're getting a fair number of hits on that class. Good, okay. Do we care that that syntax makes it sound like the Jenkins Fundamentals class is Cloud Bees free? Okay, let's see. Don't you hate writers? There we go. How's that? Yeah, that's beautiful. Brilliant. Brilliant. See, my, my use of prepositional phrases in English is catastrophically broken. I will continue working on that probably until I'm dead. It's so broken. <laughs> Everybody is because we talk that way. I, right. But every sentence I write, I reread and usually rewrite them because I go, oh, no, that's not uh, what whoops. I meant. I just put things all in, in a jumble. Yes. Great. Okay. Well, and maybe uh, kind of related to this, is it possible to substitute swag as uh, incentive for taking this paid, paid versions of uh, Jenkins fundamental classes, certified classes offered by Cloud bees, something like this. Mm, yeah, right. Consider uh, incenting, incenting with with courses, with online courses. Certified, whatever. Like, yeah. 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 I think Meg uses. Say something about paying for them, Vlad. Was that? Did you say something about paying for the classes? Uh, well, I uh, hadn't explored it very in detail, but uh, my understanding that CloudBees offers a lot of uh, really nice free fundamental classes, but there are some like classes uh, which allow uh, certificates. And some of those certified classes require some payment, okay. as I understand. Self-study for right now for all of the classes is free and I think it's probably going to stay that way. But right now all of the classes are free to take for self-study. Oh, great. Separately is, well, and these classes actually relate if you understand the material in a set of these classes, hmm. um, that pretty much qualifies you to sit for certification. Now, the certification exam itself comes with a cost and it's run through a third party organization. Ice. I see. Although right. if you're spreading the word because of COVID right now, the price is discounted and people can take the exam from home, which is a whole lot easier than having to go into the center. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Thanks for clarifying. So yeah, if you, if you go to mm -hmm. Cloud Beach University page, um, there, there is a, a little blurb. It looks like a class, but that tells you what to do if you want to get certified and it tells you what the classes are and what the whole process is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but the classes themselves are free to you at any time for self-study. Great. Thanks. And under constant improvement, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Meg, you had said right now, the, all the certification prep courses are, are actually no charge? They have, yes, those, and those have been free charge, no charge for a while. Okay. Um, the one class for which there was a charge was the pipelines intermediate class, which I think may be about to be broken up into smaller modules anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I suspect we made it, we made everything free because of COVID. Um, and but I suspect that we will keep it that way. Cloudbees general thought is that um, we're much more concerned that people learn how to do this stuff and do it right than we are making money out of training. So, uh, and may I ask to uh, like clarify one question, which I'm not quite sure that I understand. 
Uh, really the difference between CloudBee's version of Jenkins and community version of Jenkins. Uh, uh, <laughs> is it a complex question or if it is not so complex, well, maybe somebody I, I, I'm with that. Devlet. I'm with him. <laughs> Mark, do you want to take it? <laughs> I'm happy to take it. It's a, that's a, there, there are many, many differences between them. Uh, and, and so the, it's, it, it's a, a lot of different areas. So for example, but I think um, it can be summarized quickly, can't it? Let me oh. do the high level summary and then you do the brains. Go for mm -hmm. it. Okay. CloudBees, um, the CloudBees product is totally based upon Jenkins and we continue to contribute heavily to Jenkins. It is customized for enterprise, for special enterprise, meaning large, large configurations. Mm -hmm. um, the big feature that you get is something called an operation center, which all your masters are attached to. So you can sit on your operation center and connect to all of your masters and download stuff and sort of, sort of, not as much as I wish, but sort of manage all your masters from one place instead of running around the place trying to find every hundred, every one mm -hmm. of the hundred masters. And then there are a number of proprietary plugins that are offered that have very great value um, and Theoretically, I don't know if this all, but theoretically things that you need in an enterprise more than a small, you know, a lot of things for, I don't know, old ones, long running builds and there's um, cross team collaboration, a, a much nicer feature, for instance, if you have a plugin on one master that you want to trigger a plugin on another master, a very nice interface for that um, and a few things like that. So if, if you're really small, um, you know, if you're a little shop with three uh, developers, CloudBees probably isn't much use to you. But if, as you start to get bigger, CloudBees has some very nice features in it. Mm -hmm. um, more sophisticated um, authorization through roles, and which now there's an open source roles, but it's not as robust as the one that's in CloudBees. Mm -hmm. uh, um, now, Mark, you can actually, Mark, you go and do more details. I think you did great. No. Oh, um, the new, the new hot one. Where I, geez, I've only been writing on it for the last four hours. Um, for CloudBees, for configuration as code, um, that still works. But with CloudBees, you get the ability from the operation center. You can configure all your masters using, you know, CloudBees as code. So you get the interface and that and it includes you can do plugin management for all of your masters through configuration as code on CloudBees. Mm -hmm. um, so that sort of stuff. But it's it's mostly features that extend Jenkins in ways that are very useful if you've got a very large installation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so and this class is provided by CloudBees. They are targeting mostly uh, uh, cloud bees version, like large installations, or uh, they cover both? We, um, be, well, frankly, most of our cloud bees customers start out running Jenkins. Come and and mm -hmm. at the day that their top IT comes in with a knife pointed at his heart because he's so tired of running around trying to find all 100 masters every time he needs to do an upgrade. Um, they start talking about putting in CloudBee so they get some control over it. Um, but it, in fact, when you boot up CloudBee's core, or it's about to become CloudBee CI, we're renaming it. But when you boot that up, the first screen you say, you get says, welcome to Jenkins. So we, so this is why we do the Jenkins classes and the, the classes are clear, clearly marked as to whether they are a Jenkins class or a CloudBee's core. But mm -hmm. if you are brand new to all of it, um, you'd better take the Jenkins classes before you take the CloudBees core. Mm -hmm. Because in CloudBees core, you learn a lot of fancy extra stuff you can do with agents, but you don't learn what an agent and a node is. We assume you know that. So um, the, you know, can, the um, mm -hmm. security settings, a whole bunch of that stuff is just the same, although slightly different ramifications because you have, you even have the option. You can have, you may have masters attached to your operation center that are still self-managing that you don't control from the operation center. Or you can set on your operation center, don't let any masters have any executors and nothing you do on any of those masters will put an executor on any of them. Mm -hmm. But it's a, highly configurable, of course, it's Jenkins. You know? 
Yes. Two geeks, three opinions. We support them all. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mike. Other topics that you'd like to discuss? Yeah, just for uh, get the same way. And the CD Foundation, Foundation, CD Foundation, where it get apart. For example, Jenkins and CloudBeasy CD Foundations are sent <laughs> together in the same post. CD food, CD Foundations. Okay, so I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Where does CD Foundation sit in and the hierarchy of things? Yeah, it's of Jenkins and CloudBoy, CloudBeasy, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely it's between, might. it's above, it's on the top. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, Jenkins is a project, Okay. Um, right? It's an open source project, um, but the, the Continuous Delivery Foundation provides a legal entity provides a legal entity so that um, the Jenkins project can enter into agreements, legal agreements, uh, as an example, code signing certificates. Um, a code signing certificate organization does not want to issue a certificate to a, an entity which does not exist. Right. It would be far too easy to steal or to to mislead people. And so they demand that there be a legal entity. Um, the other is donate receiving donations, um, uh, processing, uh, well, in our case, processing small gifts <laughs> to <laughs> to contributors. Uh, they did all the shipping for us of the things from the Hackfest. And it was very, very nice because prior to them, we've done all sorts of heroic, crazy things of having people do their own shipping. And, and it's much, much better when somebody who's really good at that knows how to do it. And it does, I think this is true, correct me, Mark. Before there was CDF, Jenkins did, or uh, CloudBees did all of this stuff. And then there were getting to be times when the financial people, it was like, something needed to go out for the open source community at the same time that something needed to go out to CloudBees customers. And needless to say, the financial people were saying, they're giving us money, they get priority. And the community is saying, but, 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 but. So it was a nice, it's, it's an argument that we should not be having on a day-to-day -day basis. So this gave us an organization who is primarily charged with the care and feeding of the open source community independent of cloud bees who tries to take very good care of their customers hopefully succeeds yeah but. now in terms of a uh, historical detail uh, the jenkins project actually came into existence in 2011 as a result of a copyright dispute with oracle corporation uh, mm. uh. the preceding project was called hudson and it was it, the the copyright for that that the copyright for Hudson was owned by Sun Microsystems. Oracle purchased Sun Microsystems, and the Jenkins project, uh, the the people who were developing on the project that was then known as Hudson, um, started trying to understand what it meant that it, it had been purchased by Oracle, and Oracle became somewhat determined that they were going to strongly assert their ownership of the Hudson copyright. And that was the catalyst that then caused the Jenkins maintainers to say, we are renaming the project. What was Hudson will now be Jenkins. <laughs> and, and thus, because of that, the Jenkins project is sensitive to ownership of copyrights. And, and we will continue to be sensitive to it. Prior to Continuous Delivery Foundation, the copyright was held by an organization called Software in the Public Interest. So copyright ownership is a big deal for us and we make sure that, that we know who owns the copyright and that it is an, a legal entity with the right defenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another Thanks. bit of trivia is that Koshika, who is the person who originally wrote Hudson when he worked for Sun 
and he's, I don't know if you've ever met him. He's very impressive. He's very, it's just because he's so gentle. Then he always said, I was just lazy. I just wrote this. I was tired of doing the same stupid thing over and over again. And that's the beginning of Jenkins. But he is one of the co-founders of CloudBees. And until very recently he was with us, but when the CDF started up, he went to CDF and was that. And now he is now established his own company doing something that is related. Um, CloudBees is one of, is a heavy investor in his company. He continues to hold a very large ownership of CloudBees. Um, so it's very incestuous, but you know, but so KK is out there, but KK, when KK went to CDF and I would say, Mark, he stayed there long enough to make sure that they were solid because wherever KK is has a certain panache because it's KK. And uh, did, did that address your question? Right. I'm sorry. I love yes, that. yes. I love history. Now everything makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's a good, it's important point to know the things. It is something that the, the we, we, I, you, you actually had a couple of things that I didn't know. This is not written up any place, actually. On, I oh, control of the course. content of the training of material. Course, so I of course, of course it back. is. It's in so. it's in blog posts all over Jenkins.io. Okay. But but agreed there isn't a there isn't a definitive history of the Jenkins project anywhere that you could find as a single document that I recall. Yeah, but and it strikes yeah. me that like because we have been very careful at trying to keep our Jenkins courses separate, but there is a question. This is a Jenkins course, it's offered by Cloudbees. What is the difference between what Cloudbees there ought to be and there was some other stuff there once which got terribly crusty and we lost it. But it ought to be out front. It's like, what is CloudBees compared to Jenkins? So I, okay. I can do some work on that, so. All right, any other questions? Just, I wanted uh, to uh, a little bit address uh, the section called tools, using tools in our documentation uh, and specifically how it is related to configuration, which we uh, touched a little bit in the earlier in this discussion, uh, specifically of poor configuration as code plugin. Uh, there is a section in, uh, I'm not sure if section is correct word, but uh, there is part of configuration as code called tools, which you can specify different tools like JDK, mm. Python and so on. So the question is, is there a relationship between documentation, our documentation, uh, tools section and tools section in configuration as code? There, uh, there is certainly a, is, yes. Um, and yeah, let's see if I can bring up something to show an example of it. Here we go. Okay, so if we look at a configuration as code definition file, here's my Jenkins.yaml. All right, and we'll find in this thing some tools referenced. Mm -hmm. At the end. So. Like this one. All right, so here is a the tool keyword. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we should make this more readable. There we go. And there's the ant tool, and there's its definition, where it's downloaded from, et cetera. So very much configuration as code does support the notion of tools. I'm not sure that was specifically your question though, Vlad. So ask your question again, and let's be sure we, we talk it through. Uh, well, I just trying to understand how uh, what is the best way of using tools section in configuration as code while addressing documentation uh, tool section in documentation? Uh, because when I'm trying to go through tool section and documentation, I'm trying to implement, uh, 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 for instance, using config as code approach, which may be attract, uh, attractive enough to new users. So to make it simple. And uh, I'm just trying to find out the best approach for me to navigate through this 
<laughs> complexity is in for us. And, and uh, that's a that's a very good question. So I think what you're asking is how do we how do we guide new users to success mm -hmm. and still preserve the knowledge that is needed by advanced users as they as they go well beyond what the new users need? Is that mm -hmm. a fair way to, to rephrase what you were asking? Yes. And uh in case if I'm configuring my initial instance of Jenkins uh, uh, and I'm using trying to install some tools using this tool section, uh, oh, is it appropriate way of doing or should I go through plugins.txt file and install different plugins? Well, I'm not sure if it is possible to phrase in written sentence very briefly, but just trying to explain what, what I mean by that. So but this I just, is, oh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, Meg, I was, I was going to give a, a two sentence and then defer immediately to you. So oh. go right ahead, Meg. Okay, well, I was going to actually respond with a question, sorry, because this just hit me. Back to that, you're managing Jenkins page. When Jonathan is done fixing the configuration page, this needs the same thing. Managing tools is a list of the tools that are there automatically. But, and now here, and I actually have, this is on my question of things that I need to learn that I, you know, I'm getting to the point guys where I know a lot of things and then there's the basic things that I don't. But when I'm in the configuring system page, I can configure some tools up there, what version of Java or maybe and then all this that I want up there. I can configure those in my agent or I can in my pipeline call and say, I specifically want this tool and load it from here and bring this tool in. Now, what is the relationship of all these methods? They, have, they all have their place. I believe, Mark, from listening to our favorite curmudgeon, that configuring the tools on the master itself is not the preferred way in most cases, that you want to configure them, that it's more efficient to have them on the agent or in the pipeline. I'm not positive of that. And I don't know where to look. I, I know who to call up and get his opinion on it. And he's pretty senior, I would take that. But I don't know where in the documentation I'm going to find the avuncular advice. As I go through those configurations, like if I want to use JDK 11, I'd better get that on my master. And I don't know, and, or and it may be that I should put it on my master and then use that the version that's on my master to put it in my agent. I don't know. but. Yeah, is, is that which a little bit of what you're asking, Vlad, is that there's all sorts of places where I can define my tools uh, and right, right. Right, and at the same time, I'm just trying to um, figure out the simplest approach. So again, it was uh, consumable by, by a person who is trying to get understanding. So in case it will be simple well, enough. It's like, it's one of those things where I don't, I think, the options are there for a reason. For example, if your pipeline is building an application that runs on desktops and Androids, you want to build it and then you want to test it, you're going to have separate stages for testing it and you're going to test it on Androids and you're going to test it on Linux and Windows and whatever else you want it to run on. So in that case, what's on your master is not necessarily what you want because you know and you want to make sure it works with jdk 8 and jdk 11 these are all things that are tools and i believe you do that by making agents that have the specific thing you want to test for the old-fashioned way and we're all old enough here to remember when there was one group who coded this application for desktops and then there was a hot new group who took that same thing and made it work on android and then they did some stuff on Android, and then we had to send it back to the old group to run on the PCs. But today, the, the right way, I believe, would be to code the application to run on everything and then write your pipeline so it gets tested on everything correctly. And that's going to mean defining your agents. Now, if you're doing, you know, if you're going to do a cookbook for your grandmother for Christmas using Jenkins, you probably don't care. You're going to use one version of every tool and you can put it on your master and go ahead and build it and put a red ribbon on it. And grandma will be just happy as a clam. But uh, so I, I think it's one of those things I think, but I think there's a lot of subtleties about the reasons to use different methods for defining the different tools. Am I correct, Mark? Yes. 
there are lots of subtleties around different methods and different tools. Yep. And every every method has times when that is the best one to do, right? Right. And if I am a new user who wants to get quickly to this understanding rather than choosing one because it looks like fun and finding out six months later that I did the wrong one, I don't know where to find a little overview that tells me you can configure tools here and here and here. Well, and, and so, so Vlad, and the, the, the configuring tools is challenging because of the many different ways that it, that can be the exact right way to do it for your particular use case. Right. So this thing, this page talks about the, the classic way of doing it where I have an installer that will automatically install onto my agent when I need that tool. So mm -hmm. think of that as the agents are general purpose and don't include tools until they need them. <laughs> in the um, Kubernetes wait a minute, where on this page does it tell me that I'm putting these tools on my agents? It doesn't, but it would if this page if page were written. Before yeah, before I made an agent, I did configuring system, and I'm defining all my toy. I I put all my tools there. So aren't I done? I'm well, being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. There, so, yeah, that's what exactly what Jonathan pointed out with the config. What we came up with the configuration. This thing needs exactly the same. The that's forest. Right. right. The, and it doesn't. It doesn't have to give every corner case, but give them sort of. Why you would define them here? Why you define them here? Why you define them there? Mm -hmm. And it, that's a not important point that uh, we need to take care. Of. For example, in the same page we have this a tutorial section uh, speaking about using build tools. So we 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 need to try not to repeat ourselves in, in different pages. Yes. You, you find it and the tutorial about the yeah using build tools okay so if the first one it's just an introduction maybe more technical details uh, go into the tutorial section how to install it how to configure it and how to use it use it the, in the way one the way two and right. go on exactly and yeah but but in the the introduction to managing tools tells you that there's different ways to do it and but not how each and yes not the detail again forests not trees we're really the more i read of our doc we're really 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 good at trees and if you want to find the forest god bless you um if you are as wise as mark and work at this for years and years you will wake up one day and you will see the forests but we could be more generous with our new users. Well, we need to add section how to become wise as Mark and so on. Yeah, there it right. is. Right, yeah. that's, that's, what, <laughs> that's what we need. Oh, that's it. And, and the answer there is make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> that's the way wisdom comes from a lot. So, okay, so the complications, what you're really saying, Meg, was that the, the techniques for tools for tool use depend on agent type are they general purpose agents or specific or tool specific mm -hmm. uh, it also depends on if they are ephemeral or not yes so if the agents disappear after every build um it it also depends if they are for example kubernetes or not so kubernetes and i guess docker or none of the above and the two okay everybody else out here's meg's ignorance the tools that I define on the master itself through the configuring configuration screen, configuring the system, are those just for builds that I run on the master? No, no, they are installed automatically on agents on demand. Okay, they so automatically every agent that I create on that master will have those tools. With with the caveat, for example, that you won't you won't use those if you're on a kubernetes agent because on a kubernetes or a docker agent you just say like it did in this in this example 
you say which image you want to use and it will go get that image for you and use it. Okay. So, so here I didn't have to do anything on the master at all to tell it how to find Maven. It finds Maven by pulling it down as an entire Docker image. Aha. Uh -huh. And so, so if all of my agents are Docker images, what I can figure on my master as tools is of no use whatsoever. That's right. You, you never said touched, it brilliantly. Never seen. You didn't need to configure a single tool on the master if all you use are Docker agents or if you use Docker and Kubernetes agents. Because if container, you use, I guess we should say container agents. There's right. another new container type that's out there too. It begins with a P, I think. I don't know. But so we should be saying containers, not just Docker. Well, yeah. It's so it's, it's really containers or not. Right. And usually in the, in the, it's much more common if you're doing ephemeral agents, you'll do containers because most of us are too impatient to start up an entire virtual machine for only a single use. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we have, we have hit our time. I propose to conclude here. Any mm -hmm. other topics before we close this end this session? By the way, what is this list here that we just wrote? It's full of good stuff, but what's it say above it? This is the Doc's Office Hours Notes. Okay. And no, I well, just beyond that, all the do we have an action item for any of these things or I had not put any action items in. My intent like, was Like what the are office. the differences between Cloudbees products and Jenkins? This is great. Where does maybe it yeah. doesn't need to go anywhere? Are we yeah, or that's well, cool. for next week we can decide if this and yeah, this one, this one decidedly does not go on Jenkins.io, right? This is, this is, describing those differences is a CloudBees responsibility. responsibility. And therefore, CloudBees.com can worry about those. The Jenkins site doesn't need to worry about this really any more than we worry about what are the differences between Spinnaker right. and Jenkins. Right. We're, we're, uh, we've Jenkins, got enough. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to take that. I will grab that one and do it, okay. but... Um, continuous deliver fund. Now that might be a little bit. Ah, uh, that's a little bit. Well, whatever. The tool stuff. I oh, guess that. Do this we one's have already on Jenkins.io. This kind okay. of information is already there. Okay. Um. Here we we've we did what needs to happen to the configuring the system sec. This using tools that should be put into an issue. For that, right? right? Just just like we did with twenty nine eighty seven, right? That, that could be the other information could be captured. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it was good stuff. I wanted to make sure we. It was a fun conversation. It's like, does it have any future? All right. Okay. I will okay. post a recording of this session. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to stop sharing and. Thanks very much. Bye. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Terrific. Talk to you next Thank week. You. Bye bye.